Hi, uh, in this video we're going to talk about um, Tate Coptic grammar, uh, specifically gender, number, and the definite article. And this will lay the groundwork for actual sentences and stuff we can look at, um, some real Coptic. Um, so gender, in Coptic we have masculine and feminine gender, so nouns are either masculine or feminine. Um, if inanimate nouns, like dogs, people, you know, um, that will be related to the sex of the noun uh, for the animate noun. So a male human being is going to be masculine and a female human being is going to be feminine. Um, uh, obviously, it gets more complicated if you're talking about like a chair. It'll be one or the other. And you'll usually learn it with the, um, uh, with the word. And so when we talk about the definite article, you'll see how that sort of happens. Um, with number, we have either singular or plural. Ancient Egyptian uh, had a dual. Normally, uh, this is shown by the definite article, the word for the, um, but it can be shown on the noun sometimes. So, for example, we have yot and yate, father and fathers, son and snail, uh, brother and brothers, joy and ejel, ship and ships. Normally, however, the noun itself is not going to be different from singular to plural. Just be the definite article that shows that. Um, so here's the definite article. So it shows both gender and number. We have uh, just a pi, so p or pe, te or te, ne or ne. Um, and sometimes this will have a superlinear stroke on it. Um, Pe will be used for masculine singular nouns, te for feminine singular nouns, and ne for plural, either gender. And um, the epsilon here is only used when the noun itself has two consonants that it starts with. Uh, so for here, for example, we have this one y sound, the epsilon yod when it's used as consonant, counts as one consonant. If we were to have two in a row, um, so not just two letters, but two sounds, actually. Um, then we would have pe, otherwise it would just be the p. So this would be piot, or piot, the father. And so this means the, obviously. Um, so we're going to just go over some examples, and hopefully that will make this pretty easy to understand. Um, so we have some sentences here. So really quickly, just so you're able to understand these sentences. Um, in Coptic, you can have a preposition in front of a noun. So prepositions like at or on, words that say location. Um, just like in English, it works the same. He, right here, um, he, this word he, means on. So we'll just be using that here. Um, I'll tell you the words first. You can try to think through what the what they mean, what the gender of each word is, and um, also uh, why why which definite article is being used. Um, but you don't need to use the word any word to mean is or to be in Coptic when you're saying somebody is on or under or near something. When you're using a preposition um, as the predicate in the sentence or prepositional phrase is the predicate. So you would say like um, the brick on the wall. You don't need to say is in Coptic. And that goes back to ancient Egyptian um, is that had very similar constructions in middle or late Egyptian. Um, so here we have Rome, which means man or human being. Uh, this is related to the ancient Egyptian word remech, um, which had the same meaning. And then he, which means road. So think for a second, pause the video if you want to. So it's prome, the man, he is on, the he, the road. We have the p here without the epsilon because this is just one consonant. Here we have the tau, so the pi here without the epsilon. Here we have the tau with the epsilon because h, and then this is a consonantal I sound, so it's a Y sound, a Y sound, basically. Um, H and then the Y sound counts as two consonants. If Rome, he, tau. Um, so think about that for a second. Oh, and by the way, tau means mountain. 
Okay, so the man is on the mountain. So here, this is this way for the same reason. Um, we have just the pi here because there's just one consonant before the vowel, right? So to the mountain. So the man is on the mountain. And here we have teshime hi one. One is stone, and shime is woman. And so we have the epsilon here. This is the tau because it's feminine. It's a woman. The epsilon because we have two consonants, the sigma, lunate sigma, and then we have the the ha right here. So it's ha, two consonants. So you have to put this in here. And then we have here no consonant. So we have, and stone is apparently masculine. You can tell because of the p. Um, so you have pone, and there's no consonant there, so you just use the the pi form. So the woman is on the stone, the rock. And so you can see um, the definite article is attached to the beginning of the noun. Um, in if you know your any late Egyptian, you'll know that these were at one point separate words, and at one point they actually came after the noun, um, the definite article. Uh, However, in vocabulary, you'll generally be given the noun with the definite article. So um, that's when you that's how you learn your genders. You'll see the definite article with it. Just learn it as part of the word, and then you'll you'll not forget it essentially. And uh, as usual, our references to an introduction to Hittite Coptic by Thomas O. Lambden.